Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, dear customers, dear experts, dear partners, dear suppliers, dear competitors, it is with great pleasure uh, that I will uh, share with you uh, um, some time to try and uh, provide some return of experience on our tramway project in, uh, in MENA. And it is probably even more exciting, uh, as I have been given the green light by the Dubai authorities to uh, present to you some of the key features of the Dubai Rapid Transit System, uh, more commonly known as the Dubai Al Sufu Tramway, as this project is still under execution and has not, uh, has not yet been promoted uh, on the public place. So I will try to satisfy your curiosity, your professional curiosity about this prestigious project. And I will also try to contribute to the success of this conference by uh, providing a few takeaways on tramway procurement strategy and tramway execution strategies. So what's the agenda? I think uh, let us remind first of what are, what are the benefits that a tramway should bring to a city. Uh, obviously requirements of customer, whether they are expressed formally or uh, uh, to a lesser uh, formalized level of expectation. Obviously uh, benefits are the one driving the requirements and leading to satisfaction of the end user. So satisfaction will bring traffic, traffic will bring revenue, and revenue will generate return on investment. So it's important to start with that. Then I will try to identify a few challenges that we have faced and we are facing to deliver such a transit system, especially in this region. I will try to suggest some recommendations. Uh, how can we best address those challenges? And finally, I could find no better image than the a book of cooking recipes uh, to try and list uh, some good ingredients and some good ways of working so that ultimately we have some lessons learned to be successful on the delivery. So it's all about sharing our experience. So what are the benefits of the tramway system for a city? Obviously, the first one to come to anybody's mind is solving traffic congestion. I think those two pictures are self-explanatory. I'm not sure where the, the left picture comes from. I think it's maybe Bogota because I recognize some, a lot of bus stuck into the traffic there. On the, on the right hand side, uh, the picture is self-explanatory again. Um, and I think it's a very good example also on how to uh, treat nicely uh, landscaping design when implementing a tramway and how you can seamlessly integrate a tramway into uh, the traffic environment. You can see that there is not even uh, any traffic light. Another obvious benefit is reducing pollution. I think as railway lovers, uh, no doubt that we all uh, recognize the benefit and the sustainability, sustainability brought by tramways with emission 10 times lower than the car and four times lower than the bus. Passenger comfort at station, very important. Uh, if we talk about really the travel experience with a capital E, this travel experience starts at the station or even starts well before the station. Uh, it starts with the designing of the proper signage and of ensuring that you have proper accessibility for the travelers to the station. So it means that when you are designing a tramway, you need to extend the scope of your design, the scope of your analysis well beyond the, the station to catch an overall accessibility area. Uh, when you talk about passenger comfort in stations, you talk about, of, of course, visual comfort. So you can see on the left hand side some specific architectural features. You talk about uh, uh, choice of material, quality of material, uh, you talk about also in terms of comfort about uh, available functionalities, um, passenger information, passenger communication, modern ticketing solutions, and you talk about physical comfort as well. Of course, the level of occupancy of the platform by pedestrians, ensuring that you have a right flow of passengers, ensuring that equipment are located at the right positions, and so on. So really, the travel experience starts away from the station, then comes into the station and obviously also comes into the train. So when you talk about passenger comfort in train, again, you talk about design, features, aesthetics. Tra the train is a unique tool for the city uh, uh, to promote its image. The train can sometimes become, become a, a, an icon of the city as well. You can see some different arrangement on the left hand side. So in terms of comfort, you talk about seat design, choice of colors, 
uh, choice of arrangement, uh, space available for people to, uh, to move distance between seats, accessibility of uh, 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 grabbing, grabbing poles, and so on. Another obvious advantage is a reduced travel time. Typically, a tramway has a commercial speed of 15 to 25 km per hour. Uh, this can be uh, achieved thanks to uh, a signalized system that gives priority to the tramway at crossroads. But that's really about uh, um, the real time of travel. There is also a, a less uh, uh, materialized kind of time. It's the perceived time. And talking about uh, comfort, when you are sitting comfortably in a train with large glazing window areas that allow you to enjoy the sightseeing, obviously you, you feel like the, 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 the traveling time is being reduced. And uh, uh, I think, like me, probably in some certain cases, you felt so, so comfortable and the ride was so smooth on the train that you, you missed the station and you had to, you had to turn back to uh, at the next station. Or, or maybe some of you have experienced the satisfaction of, of being on the metro of Dubai uh, on Sheikh Zayed Road and just looking down and seeing the cars piling up and you are nicely traveling uh, in the metro. So here you achieve a real uh, a positive uh, a perceived time benefit. Security and safety, obviously, uh, uh, requirements, standards, expectations are continuously improving and solutions are improving accordingly. So this is uh, something you would expect uh, also. Intermodality, uh, again, a very modern uh, concept of mobility and fluidity. Uh, when traveling to, from point A to point B, uh, you need to be able to leave your car in a temporary car park at the end of the line or your bicycle, jump onto a tram, on a, jump onto a tram sorry, uh, switch at the next in-connecting station and, and move uh, to the metro and then finalize your trip with a bus or with the taxi if the, if the bus is late. Uh, but obviously, intermodality is key. Uh, and I've chosen the example of Lyon, a very good example of intermodality in France, where, where all these modes of transport are available. You even have connection to high-speed trains, and they even have a cable car. Behind the scene, you have the control center to help supervise, control, regulate under any operating mode, and ensure uh, uh, regulation of traffic, safety, security of the passengers. Modernity, you expect the tram also to bring modernity to the city. A few examples of our trams here in France. Uh, from Bordeaux on the upper left-hand side, with, uh, which is a catenary-less tramway, uh, to Tours uh, with this very fluid design of a kind of dotted line uh, uh, on the map of the tram within the city, or Reims, uh, which have, has chosen uh, multicolor trams and a specific nose design. So here again, it's... The message is your city, your image, and therefore your tram. The same concept applies to the beauty of the city. And I think it is interesting to see that the tram is a, is, is a wonderful uh, opportunity for uh, authorities to uh, improve and regenerate the urban environment, which means that you are not only talking about a train on rails within a given kind of corridor in a right of way, but you are really extended your design and, and your works from wall to wall. It means from one side of the street to the other side of the street. And you take advantage of the investment and of the construction works, which by, uh, uh, with no doubt is a trouble to the city, uh, uh, to improve and regenerate the city, uh, improving pedestrian areas, improving uh, accessibility, improving design, architectural, uh, uh, urban uh, furniture, and so on. So, the tram is not a new tram. It's really a project for the city. Of course, to achieve all those benefits, you are talking about urban integration. And when you are talking about integration, the, the, the complexity even increases because you are talking about even uh, an, uh, an increased number of requirements as the number of stakeholders also increase. You have to talk to the uh, uh, urban, to the um, town authorities. You have to talk to the utilities provider. You have to talk to the private developers. You have to talk to the road authority and so on and so on. So the, the, the project gets into the, its whole complexity at this stage. So probably we could summarize all these benefits into two words. That the benefits uh, of the tramway should be about attractiveness, attractiveness to end users, to uh, uh, motivate them to switch from one mode of transport to the other, and efficiency, 
obviously, because uh, uh, the, the, the transport has to be uh, uh, um, to the benefit of the user. So let me use the Al Sufu tramway as uh, uh, an ongoing return of experience to highlight how we have uh, uh, tried to match and uh, meet these objectives. Uh, no doubt that the roads and transport authority in Dubai, when they have designed their requirement and when they have chosen the Alstom solution, they had all these benefits in mind. And I will try to give you a few examples of these. Uh, what is the, the project? Uh, our customer is the Road and Transport Authority, the government of Dubai, represented uh, by the engineer in the FIDIC sense of the term, uh, which is Sistra. We are talking here about the design and build full turnkey contract on one hand. Separately, we have secured also a maintenance contract, which means that we will be the turnkey maintainer of the whole project during a period of 13 years. But today, I will only uh, talk about design and build uh, execution. It, it's a bit too early to speak about maintenance, obviously. The contractor is a consortium formed of Alstom and Basics, whereby Alstom is the leader, so which means that Alstom has the uh, leadership and the responsibility of integrating the works, and we supply, we design, procure, install, test, of course, and on a turnkey basis, the system works, where Basics uh, are in charge of the civil works. What is the scope? So it's a full turnkey project from system integration, system engineering, all the package, all the typical package to uh, complete such a project, running stock, track, power signaling, platform screen door, you will see why, a bit surprising for a tramway. Ticketing, road signaling, and then on the civil side, the depot, the passenger station, a bit, a bit of viaduct that you see along the Sheikh Zayed Road, two kilometer of viaduct. Uh, road works, UTTs, diversion, and finally landscaping. We are talking wall to wall. So improvement on landscaping as well. Uh, the project is based on the Citadis range of product from Alstom. So benefit by benefit, I will, I will illustrate uh, uh, the, with the, using the project. This is the map of Dubai. Here is the line uh, for the Al Sufu project. So the project is divided in two phases. The phase one is uh, uh, under execution. It's a 10 kilometer line with 11 stations. Uh, starting from the maintenance depot, uh, the black pieces at the bottom, uh, joining Al Sufu Road, passing in front of Knowledge Village, Media City, the Pearl Development, all the, the nice hotels over there, the Royal Mirage, and so on. And then moving into the JBR and the marina area with a loop and coming back towards the depot. So that's the phase one. The red part on the left hand side uh, is the two kilometer viaduct that you see along the marina mall on Sheikh Zayed, and you have a loop in JBR. Uh, for phase two, that is not uh, uh, decided yet. There will be an, uh, a further four kilometer ex extension leading to Mall of Emirates and Burj Al Arab. Passenger comfort at station. Um, so you will see that these stations are like no other station uh, uh, in Europe or in the world when you talk about tramway. And I will explain to you why. These are very uh, uh, luxurious stations, high, high, high standard. The, the design architecture that you see on the left-hand side, uh, of course, match with the uh, uh, expectation in terms of aesthetics uh, in, in the city of Dubai. Uh, a lot of functionality is available uh, in terms of passenger information, but also video broadcasting, real-time video broadcasting, uh, contactless ticketing, uh, passenger kiosk with access to, uh, to web information. Uh, what else? Uh, passenger information, a few other CCTV, uh, full, full uh, video monitoring. Uh, but the key feature, and that's why the station is enclosed, is that all the stations are air conditioned, so which requires, in turn, that we equip the station with automatic platform screen doors. So that's typically the kind of equipment and arrangement that you would find uh, in a metro. Uh, here, for the purpose of cooling the station, of course, we, uh, we've chosen the same. So, as you see, a, a, a very high level of comfort to the users. In terms of comfort in train, one uh, a very new specificity also is the segregation of the tram into three classes, uh, which I think uh, uh, has not been seen anywhere else on the, on the tramway. Uh, a very nice picture on the left hand side showing the, the goal class. As you can see, there is a one seat arrangement only uh, compared to two seats per row uh, on the other class. Uh, choice, 
of specifically designed seats and large of 650 millimeter wide. Uh, uh, choice of specific material. It's a leather, leather material with wooden arm wood, leather uh, document holder, luggage racks, and so on. So very high standard kind of uh, uh, feature. Um, if we move to reduce travel time, uh, here again, uh, we are giving priority to the, to the tramway. I have mentioned before that typically the speed of a tramway commercial speed would be between 15 to 25. Uh, the design at this point in time is for commercial speed of 22 km per hour, which means that we are in the upper range of, of speed for such a tram. Uh, it's probably on the low side because it's based upon the assumption that we will have 75% priority at crossroads. So obviously if we achieve more priority, we, we, we can even reach a higher speed. So a fast tram without any doubt. Security and safety. Uh, this train is equipped like no other, this tram is equipped like no other in terms of uh, facilities for communication and video. Um, uh, we have dynamic line maps, which you rarely see on tramways. You have real-time video broad broadcasting, which means that it, on, on some other projects, the video is downloaded at the depot and you cannot change it. In, in this particular case, there will be a, a, a real-time feeding through Wi-Fi and, and you can update and change the film uh, uh, as you see fit. Uh, CCTV also, normally CCTV leads to recording of the image and then they are unloaded at the depot. In this particular case, the CCTV are, can be seen, the image can be seen in real time from the OCC. Uh, what else? Rear view cameras on the side of the tramway and so on and so on. So as you see, uh, uh, directly communication also, emergency communication by interphony with the OCC. So extra features that make really this tramway look like uh, a metro, and even a modern, a modern metro. You wouldn't see such features on the uh, metro which have been built uh, 10 years ago. Urban transport intermodality. Uh, uh, great emphasis and great effort has been put uh, in what we call station context planning, uh, where uh, at every station, uh, and along the alignment, we have developed specific analysis to make sure we give accessibility to the station. And we use the full tram corridor also to enhance uh, uh, intermodality. So as you can see here, the whole line will uh, enjoy also a pedestrian path along it and a bicycle path. Uh, there will be uh, bicycle uh, parks at every station. Um, we will have also full intermodality with uh, bus stops, uh, taxi stops, and finally, interconnection uh, at two stations, uh, the GLT station and the Marina station near JBR, where you will have interconnecting points with the metro. Ultimately, also interconnecting uh, points is foreseen uh, with the monorail on the, uh, on the Palm Jumeirah. So as you see here again, full intermodality, the control center is located at the depot. You will see all, you, we will get there all the functionalities that we have seen before. Uh, as you see, the design of the depot on the left hand side, because it is located in a highly residential and luxurious area of Dubai near, uh, near Souk Madina, uh, behind the police academy. The design here again uh, um, uh, uh, is uh, aimed at uh, um, showing that the depot is part of the project of the tramway, is not an industrial building as such. Modernity, on the left-hand side again, the design, the architectural design of the station. On the right-hand side, you see an actual picture of the mock-up uh, we delivered to the RTA and gives you uh, a view of what it actually looks like. Uh, you can see from the mock-up of the train here, scale one mock-up of the train, the nose. Uh, also, we talked about the tramway to become an icon of the city, to, to be the image of the city. Uh, the nose that we have defined for this tramway, because we design nose individually for each tramway according to the uh, city and to the customer expectation. The nose here has been designed with uh, sharp edges that reflect like a, a cut diamond, like a jewelry, which reflect the taste for luxury uh, uh, of Dubai. Beauty of the city, one key, uh, one key feature of this project is that it is catenary-less. It's the first project in the world without any catenary. So the whole alignment benefits from the 
a proprietary solution of Alstom where the train is not energized with overhead catenary system, with an overhead wire, but is energized from the ground through a third rail which is embedded into the ground and a contact shoe that moves from one segment to the other to capture the energy. Of course, as the train goes by, a control loop detects the passage of the train and de-energize the segment as the train goes by, ensuring the full safety of the system. This system is under operation in four cities in France. It has been under operation uh, since 2003 in Bordeaux in France. Uh, with a number of million of kilometers already run, which I forgot. Uh, availability is over 99.8, so that, 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 that system is really proven. Uh, as I will explain later, it has required some re-engineering anyway for, to be uh, uh, fully operational in, under the condition of Dubai. Urban integration, you can see here some renderings that give you uh, 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 some idea about the works which have been achieved to design the tramway to make sure it fits within the urban and through the station context planning studies, through the urban insertion studies, should, through the detailed safety studies, we have properly integrated the tram at interface with the roads, the landscaping, uh, uh, um, uh, the bus lane, the taxi stops, the car parks, uh, the pedestrian areas and so on. On the right hand side, you see one example of connection uh, between the tramway station and you see the escalating ramps and the lift uh, towards the pedestrian uh, bridge leading to the metro. That's one example of interconnecting station. So uh, this, this is one of the key slides of this presentation uh, where I will present to you what are the challenges. So the, the challenge are the result of some constraints, obviously, you've seen some of them before, uh, but there are also uh, uh, opportunities that can be generated uh, to be successful in the end. So what are, what are the challenges? Uh, here is a summary of all the benefits uh, we've seen together. So what is the first challenge? The first challenge here in Dubai is that we have a metro, fair enough, but the metro is in a segreg segregated right of way. The tramway is really a different animal. The tramway is at grade. It is fully inserted within the city at grade, at interface with pedestrian, interface with cars, tr uh, uh, um, crossing the, the traffic lights, uh, it's not an automatic train, which means the line of sight principle applies. There is a driver on board. He has to respect uh, the rules uh, uh, applicable to, uh, uh, to cars. Uh, so the tramway really is a newcomer in the city. So uh, new, which mean, newcomers mean, means also new requirement. And on top of that, of course, because you are in Dubai, uh, uh, the level of expectation is very high. Uh, I'm already running late. So, Newcomer means legislation issue, new operating rules, new standards. Of course, like in any other uh, trauma project, uh, the issue of third parties, urban insertion, utilities are version, land acquisition is key. I have a few examples of that where we had to redesign the project to fit some land acquisition issue. Climate, without any doubt, uh, is a constraint. Uh, what are the opportunities? I think the RTA has uh, uh, chosen the right procurement strategy by choosing a design and build full turnkey, which means that by giving the, 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 the whole scope of work to the contractor, it gives flexibility and opportunity for the contractor to mitigate the issues uh, in terms of integrating solution, changing solution, managing the interface, mitigating the sequence of work, so that ultimately we can uh, um, comply with the constraints. So, it's an opportunity also to develop new solutions, all the new solutions we have seen. Uh, it's an opportunity also to attract financing. This project, uh, the, the government of Dubai have been, has been uh, um, successful in attracting financing thanks to the design and build scheme where the risk profile was concentrated uh, under a single hat and with a large scope of supply. And finally, a key success of factor, and I think we should recognize here uh, the involvement of the Road and Transport Authority. Uh, nobody can be successful on such a project without customer commitment, fast decision-making process, and customer vision. Very quickly, because I have no time to elaborate further, here are the challenge, traffic diversion, managing the stakeholders. We can see that we have destroyed a few grass areas in front of the hotels there. Uh, utilities diversion, we have diverted over 50 kilometers of HV cable, over 10 kilometers of drainage and irrigation pipe, definitely on the critical path of the project. Urban insertion, again, we discussed about that. 
careful studies, careful planning is required. Here also how to insert the tramway, taking into account safety issues that interface with pedestrian and cars. An example of design development again, which illustrates well the flexibility we had at the design and build is that we have changed the alignment from a side alignment to a central alignment because it was conflicting with the exit of some private developers. New solutions, I have explained all the new solutions. This, this project is really something unique and is a very high standard technologies uh, and I think it would be a nice showcase for RTA and for us in the future. We have completely re-engineering the train to be robustified too much with the climatic condition of Dubai, high temperature, sun radiation, radiation, sand, humidity, corrosion, and so on. The, train is, the first train is available, has been manufactured, and, and will be going into a climatic chamber to simulate the performance of the air conditioning in particular. Uh, very briefly, experience in the MENA region. Again, Alstom, we have been able to capture this project to deliver it successfully so far because we master all activities from rolling stock to infrastructure and maintenance. We have sold uh, uh, this tram in 40 cities in 12 countries, 1,600 cities all over the world. And here in the MENA region, as you can see, uh, we have some return of experience from Alger, Constantin Oran, and, uh, and Turkey. 50 kilometers of Turkey tramway all together. Another 210 rolling stock sold to uh, Casablanca, Rabat, Tunis, and Istanbul. So finally, and that will be my, my last slide, do we have a recipe for success? So my recipe would be, first, take a large turnkey bowl. Put one full kg of experienced contractor with solid engineering capabilities. Mix with local partners for local flavor and expertise, obviously. Add half liter of flexibility. You need a lot of flexibility uh, in an urban environment, that's for sure. Uh, certainly spread a handful of reactivity bins. Reactivity is key. Uh, some issues have popped up which were unexpected. Had several pinches of in urban integration powder. Uh, I think that's pretty much obvious. Check heavily for team integration and team spirit. Uh, it's not the contractor to deliver the project. It's really the contractor and the customer all together. It's a project team, including even, even widely the stakeholder, DIWA, private developers, and so on. Put in the oven under controlled temperature. Be careful, it's very hot in Dubai, and do not let burn. And manage carefully and swiftly prick if any interfacing issue bubbles. So finally, decorate nicely for attractiveness and serve on time to passenger for their satisfaction. Thank you very much.